Good morning, everyone. Happy Memorial Day to each and every one of you. And let's not forget what Memorial Day is all about. Not only about cookouts, not only about sales, not only about having a long three-day weekend or getting family get-togethers together, which, okay, nothing wrong with that at all, but what Memorial Day is all about, and that is a solemn, reflective time, but still at the same time, a celebrative time to remember those and to honor those who have given the ultimate sacrifice all branches of military so that we can enjoy freedoms and liberties that we have enjoyed for generation after generation and after generation. And also keeping in mind, keep this in mind too, I do believe this is quite important as well as honoring our military friends, families, neighbors who have passed on in the line of duty, but those who are still missing in action. Let's pray and hope for closure somewhere along the line for those families too. I'm Bruce Main and I thank you all so very much. And after a couple of years of uncertainty about how things were going for each and every one of us that we were all affected with, the weather gods have smiled upon us today for this very solemn and wonderful, beautiful occasion, this Sermon at the Mount. And I am proud, pleased, and privileged to again be part of this ceremony. And I thank the committee at the American Legion, Carol Post 31, Post Commander Richard Stem Jr., Paul Emmert, and everyone, the entire team involved. To get us started here this morning, as we do traditionally with this Sermon at the Mount, Father Mark Bilek of St. John's Catholic Church is here to offer our opening invocation. Father Mark. On this Memorial Day, let us bow our heads and pray. Gracious God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember and give thanks for those who have given their lives in the service of our country. When the need was greatest, they stepped forward and did their duty to defend the freedoms that we enjoy and to win the same for others. O oh God, you yourself have taught us that no love is greater than that which gives its, itself for another. These honored dead gave the most precious gift they had for, they, they gave the most precious gift they had, life itself. For loved ones and neighbors, for comrades and country, and for us. Help us to honor their memory by caring for the family members they have left behind by ensuring that their wounded comrades are properly cared for, by being watchful caretakers of the freedom for which they gave their lives, and by demanding that no other young men and women follow them to a soldier's grave, unless the reason is worthy and the cause is just. Holy One, help us to remember that freedom is not free. There are times when its cost is indeed dear. Never let us forget those who paid so terrible a price to ensure that freedom would be our legacy. Though their names may fade with the passing of generations, may we never forget what they have done. Help us to be worthy of their sacrifice. O oh God, help us to be worthy. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my honor to introduce a young lady who is going to be 
singing what some people thought should have been our national anthem. A lot of people consider it our second national anthem outside of the Star Spangled Banner. And very well accompanied by the Westminster Municipal Band, let's welcome Miss Abby Estradovec. I want to welcome so many of our friends here today, including during our wreath laying ceremony, members of our Westminster City government, the Honorable Mayor Dr. Mona Becker, not attending today, however, we are duly represented. I want to take this moment to introduce members of the Westminster City Council, President Greg Pecorero. Kevin Dayhoff, Dan Hoff, and Ann Freeman. We welcome all of them as well. All right, now, one speech in our American history defined in what way this nation was going back at a time when it was at its absolute worst. A nation divided in many ways to this very day we are. However, however, even though we do have our divisions and our differences to this day, we can make it work when back in that particular time there were so many who figured and thought to the very top it would never work and we would destroy ourselves from within. It is my pleasure now to introduce to you the man who is going to give us that very speech that galvanized and reunited a nation back into strength and unity. Westminster City Council person, currently the chaplain of our American Legion Post 31, let's welcome to bring you Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, let's welcome Kevin Dayhoff. Good morning, this is an honor. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do so. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. 
It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave their last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that those dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. God bless. Good to see everyone. Right now, as is customary, placing of the Westminster, the city of Westminster wreaths. At this time, I will be joined by Council President Greg Pecorero and from the Westminster City Police, Lieutenant Blackwell. Thank you, Bruce. On behalf of the Mayor and Common Council, my colleagues Kevin Dayhoff, Dan Hoff, and Ann Gilbert, it's a privilege and an honor to welcome you all to the annual Memorial Day Parade and Ceremony. I'm Greg Pecorero, the Council President, and taking over from Mona Becker this morning as she's recovering from a total knee replacement just about 10 days ago. Memorial Day is special in Westminster. As many of us know here in Westminster, Mrs. Mary Shellman gathered school children to march through Westminster on this day, May 30th, to the town cemetery to honor the North's deceased soldiers. We continue this practice today, 154 years later, after Mrs. Shellman's first parade, as we place these flowers on the graves of those killed in the service of our country. We're proud that the Memorial Day observations in Westminster have continued down through the years, even through the recent pandemic, Many thanks to our local American Legion Post 31 for leading, in, leading us in this remembrance for over 80 years. Although its roots are in that great Civil War of the 1860s, today Memorial Day is the day we gather as a nation to remember and mourn all those men and women who died while in the military service of our nation. This may be a friend, a family member, or a work colleague. It's a day for a reflection on the many individuals who never made it home, back to Westminster, back to families, back to the life they had known. The American Civil War was a central event in the life of our republic, as we just said, the tremors of which can still be felt in our own times. Just a few moments ago, we heard those famous words of Lincoln from the Gettysburg Address. But I want to share some other words of Lincoln's that I think are appropriate to the times in which we live today. In closing his first inaugural address, just weeks before the outbreak of the war, Lincoln told his countrymen, we are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic chords of memory stretching from every battlefield and every patriot grave to every living heart and hearthstone all over this broad land will yet swell the chorus of the Union when again touched, as surely they will be, by the better angels of our nature. Again, thank you all for being here. May God bless the United States and all who have served her. And now for our very special Memorial Day Address. I want to introduce to you 
Chief Warrant Officer 5, CW5, Gina Specia, who served 41 years in our United States Army, active duty, member of the Maryland National Guard, beginning his military career. In 1976, he enlisted in the Army under the late entry program, and in July of 77, reported to Fort Wood, Missouri to become a combat engineer. After completing basic training, Chief Warrant Officer Specia received orders to Fort Polk, Louisiana. Later selected to attend helicopter flight training and received orders to Fort Rucker, Alabama. After completing flight training, he was then commissioned as a warrant officer at W01 and assigned to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Chief Warrant Officer Specia sent, spent 10 years at Fort Campbell, during which time he went through the selection process to become a member of the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, otherwise known as SOAR. As a member of SOAR, he flew multiple classified missions all over the world and under direction of a national command authority. In 1991, Chief Warrant Officer Specia left active duty, became a special agent for the DEA, Drug Enforcement Administration. Special Agent Specia assigned to the Miami Field Division in West, West Palm Beach, Florida, and in 1995 transferred to the DEA office in Baltimore, and later joining us and moving to Westminster, joining the Maryland National Guard, where he served 26 years. While in the Maryland National Guard, Chief Warrant Officer Specia served in many different billets, officer in charge, OIC, for several human intelligence teams in Bosnia, commander of the RQ-7 Aerial Flight Unit aboard Naval Air Station at the Naval Air Station Patuxent River, the RQ-7, an unmanned aerial vehicle, final tour is the command of the Chief Warrant Officer for the 29th Combat Aviation Brigade, the 29th CAB. Chief Warrant Officer Specia deployed to Sinai, Panama, the Persian Gulf, Iraq, Kuwait, and Syria. Numerous awards. Numerous awards include the Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star, Meritorious Service Medal, Ar Air Medal, Armed Forces, Expeditionary Medal with the Arrowhead Device, and Chief Warrant Officer Specia, also a Master Aviator, of course. He's been a member of our community here in Westminster for over 25 years, and has even spent some time coaching football at Winters Mill for over 20 years. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Gino Specia. Thank you. Thank you. Let me adjust this a little bit. Distinguished guests, citizens of Westminster, veterans, and most importantly, Gold Star families, good day to you all. Memorial Day is a day that we come together as a nation to honor those that have paid the ultimate price for our way of life. As many of you know, this day was originally called Decoration Day. In 1869, the head of an organization of Union veterans, Major General John A. Logan, established Decoration Day as a way for the nation to honor the graves of those who died in the Civil War with flowers. It's believed he chose May 30th to observe this day because flowers all over the country would be in bloom. Then in 1971, Congress declared Memorial Day a national holiday, placing it at the last Monday in May. The day was then expanded to honor all those that have died in American wars. In December of 2000, Congress passed and the President signed into law the National Moment of Remembrance Act. This act was to ensure those who sacrificed their lives for the country were not forgotten. This moment is for all Americans, no matter where they are, to stop at 3 p.m. on Memorial Day for a full minute of silence and remembrance and honor those that have died in the service to the United States. 
We're also reminded on this day that brave men and women have always stepped forward to take the oath of allegiance as members of America's armed forces that were willing to fight for and, if necessary, die for the sake of freedom. There are many stories of those brave veterans who have gone before us and paid the ultimate sacrifice. They left families and loved ones behind, and those loved ones became gold star families. This is an honor that no family wants. But service members don't serve alone. In 2015, there's approximately 1.7 million members who served alongside their active duty service members. Of that number, approximately 1 million were children and over 600,000 were spouses. And whether you live in a predominantly military community or not, chances are you know a family member of someone that served in the armed forces. That's why you should know what a Blue Star family is and what a Gold Star family is and how they are different. So what is a Blue Star family? A Blue Star family consists of the immediate family members of a service member during times of conflict. A Blue Star family can display a Blue Star service flag. The number of Blue Stars on the flag corresponds to the number of individuals who currently serve in the armed forces from that immediate family. The Blue Star service flag was patented and designed by World War I Army Captain Robert L. Quizar, who had two sons serving on the front line at the time. The flag quickly became the unofficial symbol of a child in service. What is a Gold Star family? A Gold Star family is the immediate family members of a fallen service member who died while serving in conflict. How do we recognize a Gold Star family? A Gold Star family can display the Gold Star service flag for service members who were killed or died while serving in the armed forces during time of conflict. The number of Gold Stars on the flag corresponds with the number of individuals who were killed or died. A Gold Star is placed over the Blue Star on the Blue Star service flag so that the blue forms a border and then creates the Gold Star service flag. In 1918, President Wilson authorized a suggestion made by the Women's Committee of the Council of National Defense that mothers who lost a child in service could wear a traditional armband with a gold star. This led to the tradition of gold star covering on a blue star service flag to show that the service member had passed. In 1967, Congress officially authorized the flag. I tell you all this today so that you, we as a nation and as a people can recognize and honor Blue Star families and Gold Star families and recognize their sacrifices. Whether it's a parent, a spouse, or a child, it's important for all of us to honor the families of the fallen and also those that are deployed. The loss felt by Gold Star families is forever. Memorial Day is not about picnics and parades, though there's nothing wrong with enjoying our American way of life. But on Memorial Day, we want to also come together with humble gratitude and sincere reverence for the service of those individuals who took the oath and their enduring sacrifice. Men like Chief Warrant Officer Three Sonny Owens and First Lieutenant John J.R. Hunter who made the ultimate sacrifice during Operation Just Cause in Panama in 1989. Sonny and JR were members of B Company, 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment. They were flying a Little Bird gunship. While they were engaged in a firefight across the canal zone, they called out they had taken fire and were going to return to the rearm refuel point to inspect their aircraft. They arrived in a rearm refuel point inspected their aircraft, and they made a determination that they were going to get back in the fight. They took off out of the FARP, flew across the canal zone, and no one heard any trans radio transmissions from them again. A search was conducted, and their aircraft was found, crashed, and on fire. Sonny and JR were both killed. They were my friends and my brothers. Men like Sergeant Jacob Michael Schwally, Jake was a fire team leader in C Troop, 3rd Squadron, 73rd Regiment, 1st Combat Brigade Team, 
of the 82nd Airborne. Jake was in Ghanzi Province, Afghanistan. A call came to his operations center indicating his sister unit was in a severe firefight and they needed help. Jake and his troop rallied to the call, rendered assistance, and returned to the fire base. On his return trip, Jake's vehicle was stuck, struck by a command detonated 500 pound IED. Jake was killed. Jake was my godson, and his dad, CW4 retired, Thomas Schwally, is my best friend. I was there when Jake was born, and I watched him grow into the man he was the day he died. I often think of Jake, and when I do, I'm filled with a tremendous sense of pride for the man that Jake had become. He was a non-commissioned officer, a fire team leader in the 82nd Airborne. Jake was the guy that everybody in his unit knew they could depend on, and they did. From the American Revolution to the global war on terrorism, more than one million Americans have made the ultimate sacrifice. They died so that we can continue to cherish the things they loved, God, country, and family. In reflecting on the sacrifices made of their comrades during World War I, the founders of the American Legion saw four common pillars as to why Americans so often answer their nation's call, even to the point of sacrificing their lives. They do it to provide a strong national defense, to keep America safe, secure against those enemies who want to destroy our American way of life. They do it for their fellow comrades, for those fighting by their side against all odds, and for those who eventually separate from the military but proudly claim their status as veterans. They do it for America's core values, God, country, family, patriotism, and the freedom to worship as we choose. They do it for their children so they can grow up in an America that's strong and free. It's through this last pillar, the children, that we must continue to honor the spirit of these heroes. We must share with them the legacies, tell the stories of those who are no longer here. Nearly 7,000 American men and women have died while fighting the global war on terrorism. Many were parents. So we're gathered here on Memorial Day to honor the memory of our fallen warriors who gave everything for this country. President Ronald Reagan reminded us, he says, we see the soldiers as old and wise, but they most were boys when they died. They gave up two lives for this country, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. They gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be like us, revered old men. They gave up everything for their country. And all we can do is remember. Remember and be grateful. Not just on Memorial Day, but every day we need to remember and be ever so grateful for the brave men and women that have helped preserve this great nation. Thank you, God bless you, God bless America. I couldn't echo those sentiments better, ever. Well put, Chief Warrant Officer Gino Spatia. And now, our benediction for our Sermon at the Mount ceremony here this morning. And with our benediction, let's welcome from St. Benjamin's Evangelical Lutheran Church, Pastor David Schaefer. I invite you into prayer with me. Lord God, we are doing something holy. This is important. This is holy stuff. We thank you for the men and the women who have served this great country of ours. We remember, we have remembered, we will continue to remember Thank you for this city of Westminster that passes along to its future leaders this idea of remembering, of giving thanks for those who serve. For all these years, this town has come together like this. 
And it's so important for us to do that and for us to continue to remember, to look ahead, to stand tall and proud in the tenets of our democracy and our country. Thank you for this awesome gathering. Thank you for these men and women who have served. Thank you for those who serve today and thank you for those who will serve tomorrow. Be with us as we go our way this day that we can continue to put forth the great, great things that our country stands for. Love of neighbor, care for neighbor, safety in our streets and in our schools, in our churches, in our workplaces, in our towns. Lord God, again, thank you for this day when we go in peace. Amen. And now once again, it's my pleasure to introduce, as we all join in with our national anthem, gentlemen, please, please remove hats. And everyone, honor our flag, honor our nation, honor our military, our veterans, and those who gave the ultimate sacrifice with our national anthem, again, sung by Ms. Abby Ostradovic. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Whoa, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? And the Beautifully done again. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we, exactly, as we get ready to now, get ready to bring to a conclusion this solemn ceremony, but yet reflective and celebrative, as we get ready to do what we will do for the remainder of our Memorial Day, including of course, obviously, and we all darn well should. Remember those in our hearts, our minds, our prayers while you're cooking out, while you're entertaining friends. Don't forget who's really in the spotlight on this day. And that is our military friends, neighbors, husbands, wives, daughters of all branches of the military who gave the ultimate sacrifice for us. Now let's welcome from our friends at the BFW Mobile Farm Post 467 with our salute firing brigade.
And again, thank you to the Veterans of Foreign Wars Honor Guard, Mobile Farm Post 467. Taps and echoes, so very well done by our members of the Westminster Municipal Band, Greg Wance and David Miller with the taps and the echo. And the wonderful, the wonderful music provided by the Westminster Municipal Band. And to each and every one of you, including members of our Westminster City Council, our Westminster government, our police department, and to each and every one of you. Now, let's remember, remember and never forget, enjoy this beautiful weather. I'm Bruce Main, and I thank you all personally so very, very much for being part of this Sermon at the Mount. Thank you, God bless you, God bless America, and God bless our veterans and they, those who did give their lives for us. Thank you again.